Hey Snackers, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hello Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. I'm the lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Welcome to episode 109 of Snack Minute. Snack Minute is your weekly 10 minute bite of learning covering tech, coding, and some cool stuff that we work on here. Uh, and the cool stuff we're going to be talking about today is learning trends with our friend Gary. Gary, do you mind introducing yourself? Absolutely. Hi all, I'm Gary Tondini, uh, and I'm a senior director at Cisco around experiences and learning and certification. Super excited to be here. Yeah, Thanks for coming. We're glad to have you. So um, with the advent of Cisco U, uh, you guys have been working on uh, putting new content out there, putting new experiences out there. And Kareem and I were kind of curious, what were some of the, what are some of the learning trends that you guys are working towards supporting? Yeah, thanks. It's uh, it's been really exciting for us, and uh, you know, learning is, is such a hot market these days. A lot of people are interested, but you can't really approach learning like you used to. So we really wanted to start fresh, a blank piece of paper. Uh, one of our first principles was put the learner first. Right, so right. it's not, hey, what's what does Cisco need to teach, or what does Juniper need to teach, or AWS. It's really what do people need to know to either better themselves or to have the right skills in their organization. Yes, yeah. we all know, you know, tech transformation just keeps going faster and faster and faster. <laughs> so we we've got to be able to do that, and and we implemented some really some interesting experiences around that. The ability to have it personalized for you. So we do assessments, pre-assessment, post-assessment. Right. You know, if the three of us took the same learning class, you two would ace through it and maybe only have to <laughs> I'm do I'm not the sure test. about Matt. Yeah, you do well, talk, you <laughs> talk <laughs> the <laughs> test too much. So, <laughs> me, on the other hand, I got to start at, you know, course one, uh, chapter one, <laughs> and go through it. So everybody's different as they approach. We got to make it work for them. Yeah. That's, uh, go ahead. No, please go. Well, that's an interesting challenge because instead of uh, building out content that uh, is specific to one certain area, you're now adjusting things for um, each individual learner, as you just said. How do yeah. you guys approach that you know, behind the scenes? Sure. Well, what we do is we really break that learning into small modules. Ah, okay. You can think of it as micro learning is one of the expressions. But we look at it as, as kind of this modular component. Think of it as Lego blocks. So now if I have certain things like ACI or I want to do Python, I may use that Lego block in multiple different learning paths depending on what that person needs to know for their role or what they're doing within their organization. Okay. Talk to us a little bit about, I know we have we have three different pillars within Cisco U. That's kind of our, our standard of what, yes. how we approach um, our education from a learner's first approach. Um, where does community fit in this? Because community is big. We have a huge community, yeah. Snackers being one of them. So, you know, can you talk to us a little yeah, bit about that? Yeah, I'd say community is, is super important because a couple things. We we like to be part of community, all of us. Yeah. Right? All of us have our own little struggles on either learning things or getting our jobs done, interactions. And so being part of community, having somebody you can bounce an idea off, hey, you know, I don't understand what I need to do for this. or is this exam, the certification, really worth the effort that I'm going to put into it? Building that community in with the actual learning that self so that it's all together. So you can have, reach out to mentors, you can reach out to friends, you can be able to have those interactions that you want, and then go off on your own self-paced to be able to do it. Right. The other thing we're looking to do is, is really then how do we bring in that instructor, that yeah. virtual instructor? That's also part of your community. Right. But we know today organizations and people don't have a week that they can send 40 people to Chicago, say, go do it, and come back you know, much smarter. It doesn't happen anymore. Right. Right. So how can I take the best of digital, that ability to self-pace the assessments, the personalization, and yet still have an instructor who is truly the subject matter expert in those areas, be able to provide that mentorship. Part of that community is with the instructors themselves. Yeah, I think we shortchange now how important a class is and how important yeah. that instructor with the class is. And so um, the, the advent of online learning or in so much of our the way we work now being online, um, it's exciting to, to hear that we're thinking about addressing that and making it so that you feel part of something and yes. you can all engage with each other and because a big part of learning is having that that feedback loop. It, it is. If you think back to you know your, your classroom, some of your best teachers yeah. were ones that got the engagement to you with your other classmates right. and with them. Yeah. So putting it together 
super critical. That's that's exciting. I'm going to ask you about something, Gary. So, you know, putting all of this together is great, right? Having tailored learning paths, having instructor in there, the the for me at least the struggle is finding all of this. Yes. Right? And so like where do I start or even how do I go to the next step? I've already started. I'm here. What do I do like what have we done in Cisco U to, to allow for all yeah, of this? A, a lot of work in that area. <laughs> you know, the, the, the stronger recommendation engine, the beginnings of AI components, the having the data and the tagging of all that content. So when we create these Lego blocks, right. it's only as good as what is the metadata that's along with it. So my ability to reconstruct it put it together, that's a lot of behind the scenes work. We've, we've had teams just going at this for the last 18 months, really building new things. And now as we build new content, we introduce new content, we make sure it's got that same tagging. And so you can find it much easier because it is the problem. You know, the reality of if you go to Netflix, when I've got 10, 20,000 pieces of content, what am I gonna watch next? <laughs> Recommendation <laughs> engines, right? What do I need to learn next? Right. Based on what your history is, right. we can actually recommend what you should be learning next to be, help you along the path that you wanna go along. So you, you did mention AI, so I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. Sure. Um, so you talked about AI from how, how you guys potentially implement that to get the generations, or the, the um, the recommendations generated. Um, are you seeing that potentially content will come out that supports notions around gener uh, generative text and AI? Yeah, there's, there's a couple different angles to that. Obviously, the ability to do some creation mm -hmm. uh, using some of these engines, super powerful. We're still going to need, though, those SMEs to look oh, yes, at. Yes, of course. It. You know, the, the idea is that, I, as I always tell my teams, you know, it's easier to criti critique than create. Right? Yes. So if I can get an 80% output coming from an AI engine, fantastic. Now let me spend the time really figuring out what's right, what's wrong, how do we say it better, those types of things is, is an absolute way in the content creation. The other thing is really helping organizations understand about AI. We got a lot of the questions, right? I mean, it's the hot topics, next right. minute, yeah. huge topic uh, from a, a couple months ago. But you know, for us, AI is a tool within right. the content. Cool. It's a thing that you talk about within your technology. You're not going today see a course that says, hey, learn about AI, <laughs> because you don't really learn about it in Correct. a single course. Yeah. Right? It's really, how do I use it, in my particular case, as a tool to better my organization, to better what I need to know? Very cool, very cool. Um, so, unfortunately, we are running out of we time. Um, these are always too short. <laughs> but since you are a first-timer, <laughs> sure. yeah, since you are a first-timer, okay. um, we uh, do ask this of all our first-timers. And that question is, uh, which superpower would you choose to have and why? Wow. Um, at the risk of being a little cheesy. Uh, <laughs> cheesy's good, man. Cheesy's good. I, I would probably go to uh, my superpower, be able to control the weather. Oh, um, I love that. You know, we've, we it's had, uh, California had droughts and then huge uh, yeah, snowpack. Right. I'm, I'm from the Seattle area. We've had a really super dry spring. You know, things, things are happening out in the weather and to be able to feed people, to be able to have consistent patterns. I love that. Would be a good thing. So that's, that's, a, that's, that's what a, I would do. A brand new a one. Cool one with a, a layer of altruism. Yeah. Right, as well. <laughs> Use for good, not for bad, which is that's awesome. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Gary, yeah. thank you for all Thanks, your insights Gary. into thank learning you, trends. Uh, snackers, uh, thank you for joining us for yet another episode of Snack Minute, and we'll see you guys next week. All thank right. you, Snackers. Thanks, Kareem. Thanks, Matt. Thank you.